Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Alan writes, how does option flow uh, dictate the trade? I've tracked some of the big bets, uh, especially come on Tesla, for example, and I've seen some are some tracked and they some are going up and some are losing bets. Yeah, that's a it's a great question. Uh, number one, we've been tracking uh, option flow for a very very long time. Um, number one, option flow. There's two types of option betters. Okay, the first better is betting on a future event. Okay, that that person is betting. So for example. If Alan, if you're going, if you're going on based on Friday's close, okay, and you're saying, hey, you know, I think Tesla is going higher. Look at all these option bets coming in on Tesla. Uh, they're coming in for this week, like we mentioned before. They came for the 800 weeklies, the 810s for next week, the 820s next week, the 830s next week, the 850s next week. Right. They are betting on a future event. Obviously, the delivery numbers came in, and they were betting that that it's going to be a good outcome. Okay, number one, nobody knows. Okay, unless you know, and then you have a whole different legal scenario to face. But number one, nobody really knows. You're, you're taking a bet that is um, an event that hasn't happened yet, right? It's still up in the air. It's to be determined. So nobody really knows. So you have two types of bettors. The first better is betting on a future event. And those guys, of course, there's a chance, there's a 50-50 chance that they're going to make money on their bet, correct? There's, a, there's only a 50-50 chance. They're either going to uh, see expiration with their profit potential or it's going to expire worthless. Those guys are betting on lottery tickets, right? That's what they are. That's why you see so many bets. If you guys remember uh, a couple of weeks ago, we started seeing before Tesla confirmed this whole 765 macro number, if you guys remember two, three weeks ago, they were coming for the 750 bets when the stock was what 715 708 right so they were betting they were they were they were hail marrying that this stock was going to hit that level that's one bet Th those guys you, you're going to see most chances than not lose their money on their bets because again they're betting on an event and oh by the way they have time so they're betting the stock's going to get to that area and they're betting it's going to get there in the time that they are betting it, right? It's a very, very tough racket to play. It's a much different scenario than somebody buying the stock, for example, on the equity side, on the underlying security at 708, 710 and say, well, you know what? I, I believe in Tesla. My stop is the previous day's low. You know, I think the stock gets to 750 versus the guys who's buying, this, you know, buying the, the premium at 708 for the 750 calls and he's hoping it's going to get there. I've personally said that if you're going to trade options, okay, number one, what do you guys need? You need measure potential, right? When you're betting on a future event that the stock hasn't technically triggered yet, then you're in God's hands, right? You're, you're literally in God's hands. So those guys who are making, right, right, Alan, those guys who are making those 850 bets, they're hoping, right? They're absolutely hoping. Then there's the option traders. They're, they're, are betting on the same 850, 820, 830 expiration, but they're betting when the stock confirms macro, okay? So there's a big difference of the guy betting on the 800 calls here, right? Here and here and here and here and here. They're hoping, right? They're praying, they're forecasting, they're anticipating. So they're not getting any technical reason why the stock should get there. The same buyer, right, the op same option player comes in and looks at the chart and looks at the chart technically and says, all right, I know this is the big technical level, right? I know this is the big technical level. Instead of me betting on the 850 calls here and 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 hoping, I'm at least betting the same area of measured potential because now the stock has confirmed macro, right? The stock has confirmed macro. And now again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, look at, look at the we uh, weekly Tesla chart, right guys? Wouldn't it make much more sense if you're an options player? Again, options and equity completely do two different things. It's like apples and hand grenades, two different things. Right. So wouldn't it make a lot more sense betting on the 850 calls on Tesla 
when the stock trades macro, right, you have a higher probability of your trade playing out the way it should be because look how much airspace you have. If you look at the weekly chart, right, if you look at the weekly chart on Tesla, at least if it takes out this whole channel here, right, whole weekly channel here, well, you already know you have a measured potential for the stock to go to the January 25 highs of 900, right? At least you have a measured potential. You have a high probability because you have so much airspace, right? You have so much airspace from this supply zone to all the way up here that your, you know, that your chickens could come into roost. Or is, is that the, is, I don't know if even the, that's even the expression. You know what I'm talking about. So you have a higher probability of the stock getting to 850 when it confirms macro then you are betting on the stock getting to 850 when the stock is at 736 and now you're hoping and praying. So the reason why you are seeing a lot of big bets come out empty handed and have their, um, have their um, bets go to zero because they are betting emotionally and anticipating the stock going instead of the players that are betting technically once the stock actually confirms. You follow what I'm saying? So yeah, there's two types of bettors in the options market, the hopers and prayers, the Miss Cleos of the world that are looking at their crystal ball and hoping the God gets there versus the technical buyers. Because I, I will tell you this much, Alan, if the stock opens, right, and challenges this macro area, we, I think we all know what this macro area is, right, on Friday, uh, on, t on tomorrow, and you start seeing betters coming in, right? If the stock is like, you know, 805, 806, and you start betters coming in aggressively, 825, 830, 840, 850, at least they will be betting technically versus betting emotionally. So that's kind of the best, uh, that's kind of the best way to kind of look at uh, the options market betting technically uh, versus bet betting uh, emotionally. So that's a, that's a really, really good question. I think uh, a lot of you guys who are trading on the option side, um, you know, should have a pretty good understanding, especially the way we trade technically, that a trade is probably going to be better when it confirms uh, macro. So hopefully uh, I answered your question there.